Hello and welcome back to the fourth part of my series about my travel to North Korea in 2016. In previous parts I covered how I went on this interesting trip organized by Lupine Travel from the United Kingdom. In the first two days of our stay we explored the landmarks around Pyongyang and went down to the border with South Korea and toured the demilitarized zone. We visited Kaesong, JSA and Truce Village and also went to see one of the DPRK's most famous and successful farms. In this part I covered the next day which we again spent in Pyongyang. It was a very special day as they told us in advance. We were to visit Kumsusan, the former presidential palace where Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il are preserved. We spent the rest of the day around Pyongyang and visited the football school and Mangyongdae children's palace. This morning they woke us up even earlier than usual, at 6.30. Lupine Travel has instructed us before going on a trip that we need to bring fine clothes with us, shirts and a tie. We also needed to be freshly shaved. We gathered in the lobby of the hotel and after the guides checked our attire we set off. While driving through the city we saw groups of women performing routines along the streets. They had red flags and our guide Lee explained that they are cheering people who go to work. So you tell me that they campaign? Uh, they're from the Women's Union, Korean Women's Union. Now it is rush hour. Uh, so now they are encouraging the people who go to work. So, uh, so in Korea we only have a rest on Sunday, mm. only one day off, not two days off. We still work <coughs> as, uh, from Monday to Saturday. And then the work is eight hour work, eight hour work. So the work begins most of the units. Mm. The world, they began their they begin their work uh, at nine o'clock to one o'clock, and then there is lunch time from one to two, and then from two o'clock to six o'clock p.m. Uh, they work again. So altogether eight hour work. Now it is rush hour, so you can see so many people on the streets who are going to work. During the ride, we asked where Kim Jong-un works and if we would see that building. She explained that he is working in the building of the Workers' Party somewhere in the city's center. She also added that it is not possible to see it. After, she went on to explain about the status of children in the DPRK. Hospital where the babies are born as the baby palace and we also call the after school educational base for the children uh, as the school children's palace as they are regarded as kings and queens of the country Kum so Sun, the palace of the sun is the former residence of Kim Il-sung the name comes from one of his beloved titles. They claim that he is the son of the nation. After he died, his body was preserved and his palace turned into a mausoleum. Original plan was that they would build him a mausoleum in socialist style on the Pyongyang cemetery. Then the general issued that they should turn his office into an even holier place and preserve him there. In that way he would rest in the place where he spent most of his time alive as he was working all the time. 
Our guides also added that after Kim Jong-il died, the supreme leader decreed that he should also be preserved alongside his father so the grieving Korean people could visit them both. Periodically, they are sent to Russia to the so-called Lenin Lab for preservation and maintenance. Lenin Lab is a nickname for a laboratory specialized in modern mummification. They started with the preservation of Vladimir Ilyich Lenin, who is now preserved in his own mausoleum on the Red Square in Moscow. They have experts who know how to keep all the former socialist leaders frozen in time. Vietnam is also sending their own Ho Chi Minh there periodically. It was not allowed to take pictures inside the compound, but luckily I could later buy the monograph about the site so the pictures come from there. The compound is, to put it simply, huge. From the entrance to the walls, garden and the building itself, everything is made massive in size to make visitors feel awe of the whole site. Once again, they reminded us that we must behave nicely. We had to move in pairs in a line that there is no talking allowed and absolutely no touching of anything. We moved through the large corridors and then used travelators to move from the parking lot to the building itself. Travelator was moving very slowly, even slower than the speed of walking. Most likely reason was that we could observe numerous photographs on the walls. First we saw Kim Il-sung, then Kim Jong-il as well, and in the end photographs of Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il. Patriotic songs were playing all the time. We entered the lobby area which was dominated by a massive staircase. Ceiling was about 6 meters high with crystal chandeliers hanging down from them. Everything was covered in marble. On doors the door handles were made from jade. In every corner there were armed guards who were standing motionlessly. We walked around the building until we arrived in front of the room in which Kim Il-sung was laying. The guides gathered us and Miss Lee explained the protocol we had to follow. First, we entered the room through some air blowers, which cleaned us of any contaminants. Then, in rows of four, we had to bow three times in front of the glass crypt and three times more on the left and the right side. The room was mostly covered in darkness with red light shining over the crypt. Quiet national anthem was playing through the speakers. Around the crypt and in the corners of the room there are a total of 8 guards, probably military and secret police. Eternal President was lying peacefully like he was sleeping. Next room was dedicated to the achievements of Kim Il-sung. There were hundreds of medals and titles which he received during his life. Majority came from North Korea and other former communist countries like Cuba, Romania, Bulgaria, Poland, USSR and others. Most of them were honorary titles and diplomas or commemorative medals given out on anniversaries. I also noticed the paper certificate in which the city of Belgrade names the comrade Kim Il-sung as its honorary citizen. Over the displays are pictures of the president meeting foreign dignitaries. On one of them he can be seen with Josip Broz Tito. Afterwards we went to see Kim Jong-il in his own crypt through the same procedure. Decontamination, darkness, three bows from three sides and the room with medals. From Europe, 
We noticed a doctorate from Belgium, a medal from a small English county, and from my region I only saw a medal from some chemical factory in Serbia. We moved on to the room containing Kim Il-sung's personal train car with which he traveled around. It looked brand new, but the main question was how did they get it inside? In the other room there was another train car, this time Kim Jong-il's. Our guides explained that he died in this exact car while going on a field guidance trip and that it was preserved as it was at that moment. There was a table full of papers and even an Apple computer. He was working on some important documents until the moment of his death. Like father, like son. Maps on the walls showed the journeys they undertook with those trains. Most of them were around Korea, only the northern one. The president also traveled internationally before the fall of communism in Eastern Europe. Most westward he went was socialist Yugoslavia. The general's international travel was more limited. We saw that he visited Moscow and Jakarta by plane. Next room contained Kim Jong-il's yacht in its full size. It looked real, even thought the hull plating it seemed a bit thin. We walked around it and again asked ourselves, how did they get this one in here? After the boat, we saw the cars of the late leaders. Both of them preferred Mercedes's. We exited the building to see the park. It is a huge area filled with fountains, statues and benches. One of our guides explained how you could visit the Kumsu Sun Palace only on certain days in the week, as we did, but that the park is open to the public every day. When we looked around, it seemed that everyone there was on a tour, like we were. In that time, it also dawned on us that we couldn't recall if we ever saw someone leisurely walking in North Korea, like having a picnic or walking a dog. Actually, I do not recall seeing any animals, like cats or dogs. Our guides commended us on how everything went smoothly and that we behaved well. Mr. Sung only had to warn one girl from the group when she put her hands behind her back as that wasn't allowed. We also took a group photo in front of this holy place. On one occasion, we also asked what is located inside the second building located by the one we visited. We didn't get an answer. While we were leaving, I wondered how much it costs to maintain and operate this Palace of the Sun. While driving back to the hotel for lunch, we saw some six platoons of soldiers going down the main street. They didn't seem armed, it looked like they were going to some construction works. A bit later, somebody raised the question of marriage in North Korea. Miss Lee answered something like this. When a couple decides to get married, they pick a date and dress up very nicely. They go around Pyongyang city, enjoy themselves and photograph in front of the landmarks. They go to Mansu Hill monuments and bow to the president and the general and then take photos there. In the evening they organize a big feast for all the family and friends and they have a great time. That is it. She didn't mention going to any officials. Needless to say, we didn't see any churches or temples during our stay. We returned to the hotel just in time for lunch. It was organized in the revolving restaurant on the top floor. 
I came earlier so I could take nice pictures of the whole city as the weather was beautiful. From this top floor you could see how the river divides the city into two sides, western and eastern. The hotel was built on an island on that river and overlooks the city's center. Western side is filled with skyscrapers, monuments and landmarks, while the eastern side looked more industrial. It seemed they wanted us to concentrate more on the western side. All of our rooms looked on this side of the city. Also, some people from our group said that the rotation of the restaurant would stop when it would get at the end of the western side. No matter how long we would sit there in the evening, we would never reach the eastern side. Lunch was pretty good and in the end the waitress asked if someone wanted ice cream for dessert. It was the first time that they have offered us a chance to try North Korean sweets, so I couldn't pass up the opportunity. They didn't ask what flavor we would like. What I got was supposed to be vanilla, I guess, but it didn't have any particular taste. Another girl from our group who also tried it said that it was like eating snow. After lunch we had some free time. I wanted to go for a walk, but they warned me that I needed to be accompanied by one of our guides. Unfortunately, none of them were available, so I went to the main entrance alone. None of the staff stopped me, so I walked a couple of circles around the parking lot alone. Next to the hotel another one was being constructed, but it seemed that the works were stopped a long time ago. For the number of foreign tourists coming into the country, Hotel Yangakto is more than sufficient. Right next to the parking lot there was a strange building with no windows. It looked brand new, but we never saw anyone going in or out and its purpose remained a mystery for us. Further down the road there was also a huge cinema complex. It hosts the Pyongyang International Film Festival, which is organized every two years. In the beginning only friendly and non-aligned countries like Libya, China or Iran were welcome. In recent years it also started showing movies from other countries like Sweden and Japan. The first horror film to ever be shown in North Korea, Swedish Frostbitten, was shown here. In the afternoon we went to visit the Pyongyang International Football School. In the school's lobby we were greeted by the principal of the school and the big picture of Kim Jong-un. Mr. Kim was translating what he was saying. Who watches the, the final football match of the men's game in the national people's uh, in the national people's game? And he met the winners of the football game. 우리나라에서는 체육 종목이 수십 개나 되고 있습니다. So in our country, the several kinds of sports are played. 그 중에서도 우리나라에서 가장 <웃음> 상징적인 종목이 축구입니다. So among many sports, the football is the most symbolic one. 특히 이제 우리나라에서는 여자 축구를 매우 중시하고 있습니다. So especially we are in our country, we put more importance on the women's football. 경양 원수님께서는 우리 축구학교가 세워진 지 며칠. They explained that the school was opened in 2013 by Kim Jong Un, who is also a big football fan. It accepts about 200 of the best kids from all over the country and about 60% of the children are boys. Also, children of the foreigners living in North Korea are also welcome to study here. During our visit, we didn't see anyone beside Korean children and very few girls. 
program of the school includes classes like in regular school and football theory and practice. We visited a classroom where students were in the middle of the lecture and the library. We also saw a covered football field inside the building. Everything looked so brand new and unused that before leaving the library I opened one of the books from the shelves to see if the pages were blank. I felt a bit of relief when I saw some text in Korean written inside. They took us upstairs to an amphitheater where we sat down and could ask questions. In the background, under the watchful pictures of Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il, a promotional football dance was playing. This was the opportunity in which we could talk the most and also get some answers. We were all interested in football culture in North Korea. Principal explained that they have many teams divided into three leagues. First one has 15 teams, the second 22 and the third one 20. In 1994 they even brought some trainer from Germany to help them prepare for the Asian Games. We asked who that was but none of them could remember as a lot of time had passed. It was unfortunate that none of them in the football school could remember the name of the only foreigner involved in their football in the last 30 years. But they said he was very good and famous and that they were at the time negotiating with some other German. This was practically the only location we saw during our stay that was not strictly related to their socialism and Kim Il-sung. It was a welcome change of pace. The only other such location was Koryo Museum. Unfortunately, we didn't spend much time there. We also went to see the football fields outside where the children were training. The itinerary mentioned the possibility of playing a friendly game against the children, but our guides said that that was not a possibility. However, Roberto Rodriguez was in his natural habitat on the football field and demonstrated his skills. When we were leaving through the main entrance, we caught a glimpse of the security monitor to which security cameras were connected. It seemed like the only rooms with cameras were the ones we visited. Some of the people from the group started to wonder if there even is anything in the other rooms. On the ride back, we stopped in front of the May Day Stadium. By the official capacity number 114,000, the stadium is the largest in the world by the seating capacity. During our visit, nobody was there but a few soldiers guarding the entrances. It is used for football matches, but mostly for mass games. In those games, participants hold up panels and form different pictures. During the ride back through the city, we stopped at Kim Il-sung Square in the middle of Pyongyang. This area is well known to the world's public because all of those parades and public meetings are held here. The leadership is watching from the high terrace which is actually located at the back side of the Grand People's Study House, which we visited on the second day of our visit. Square is massive and located next to the river. We were able to go around and take pictures, but the guides urged us not to go too far and to be careful. On the other side of the river, we saw a huge Tower of Juche Idea, one of the main landmarks of the city. Juche is the philosophy of Kim Il-sung and could most simply be explained as self-reliance. He decreed that the country needs to be independent and self-sufficient. 
Side effect of that was that it also became completely isolated. We often wondered what is the third item in the symbol of the Juche idea and also of the Workers' Party of Korea. We successfully identified the hammer and the sickle, but in the end it turned out that the third one was a brush. They wanted to include everyone in their ideology, workers as well as artists. On the river between us and the tower, there were some boats circling just in front of us, like they wanted us to see them. I recognized them from the newspaper I bought a couple of days earlier. I asked Miss Lee if those were those new electric boats. She said that indeed they were. She also added that we were very lucky to see them. When we were supposed to leave, one of the guys from our group accidentally locked himself into the bus. Through a lot of chatter, the guides managed to explain to him how to unlock the doors and let us in. Last visit of the day was dedicated to the Mangyongdae Children's Palace. Located close to the village we visited on the second day, it is a massive structure dedicated to the children's extracurricular activities. The Miss Lee has already explained how the children are kings and queens of this country. This building is just one of many examples of how much the people and the leadership love them. They come here to practice different activities after they are done with school. Miss Lee said that there will be a children's performance. Then she corrected herself and said that there might be a children's performance. I remembered those videos that went viral a couple of years ago and expected to see some children playing accordions. We expected a brilliant but short performance. When we entered the building, we were surprised that there were no pictures or statues in the huge entrance hall. There was an inscription on a big slab of red stone, the speech about children being the kings and queens of the country was engraved there. We toured through the classrooms where children were learning different skills. Some were learning calligraphy, some painted and some were practicing embroidery. They were all very well dressed and worked under their teacher's watchful eyes. I felt like we were on some kind of a very bizarre safari. We entered into a classroom where they were practicing playing accordions. Their teacher was all happy and conducted the melody they were playing. The first row that was playing was outstanding. After they finished, we gave them a big round of applause. We were instructed to continue as the performance was about to start. We were surprised as we thought that this was it, but they just rushed us through the lobby to another wing of the building. As we were rushing not to miss the show, someone from the group commented that he got a feeling they will wait for us. In front of large doors there was a lady selling flowers and Miss Lee told us that we could buy flowers for the performers. I thought to myself if I bought some for the statues I could buy some here too. They had some real flowers but after I paid I got handed some plastic ones. We entered through the doors and into a big amphitheater. 
It was full of children except for a couple of rows in the center of the auditorium which were left empty for our group. When we sat down we noticed that around us were also some other foreigners, probably the majority of those in the country at that time. On my right, on the other side of the aisle, there was a group of girls and they were very interested in me. I waved at them and they enthusiastically started waving back. The program started and it was one of the better shows I have seen in my life. In the hour and a half we saw singing, dancing, acrobatics, all kinds of instruments, everything performed by children. As we could tell, they were all very young. I managed to film a lot with my camera. I didn't understand why, but they put me in the lower row next to the passage. At the moment I considered myself lucky as my view was unobstructed and I could film without any trouble. In front of me was a cameraman with a professional camera filming what was going on on the stage. At one point during the show, in the middle of the song, the whole auditorium started clapping. The cameraman in front of me swiftly turned his camera from the stage to the audience and me as I was closest to him. As I was holding my own camera, I was the only one not clapping. I quickly dropped my camera and started clapping along. Later I figured out that the applause was because the picture of one of the leaders has shown up on the big video screen over the stage. It was a song about the eternal president and images of his Mercedes, train and boat followed. They were showing his travels around the country and his servitude to the people. The same situation with an applause in the middle of the song repeated a couple more times. There were all kinds of acts, from some inspired by Korean heritage to others with some very Disney looking characters. I made a separate video with all the materials I managed to record and you can watch it too. During the part with acrobatics, the children asked for volunteers from the audience and picked them exactly from our group. By accident, they picked out the girl who injured her leg just before coming to the DPRK and limped during the whole tour. When she was picked, Mr. Kim wanted to stop them, but she insisted on going on stage. Unfortunately, she couldn't perform the tricks the young performers did, but they all get a heartfelt applause from the audience. At the end, all the performers gathered on the stage and received thunderous applause. I figured out why they seated me in that front row. I was there because I was one of the people who bought the flowers. Now we were supposed to go in front of the whole auditorium and present those flowers to the performers on stage. During the applause, I went up from the right side. I was not sure if I was supposed to give it to the main stars standing on the left side. I would have felt bad if I would pass 20 and more children and gave the flowers to someone else. Instead, I gave them to a young girl who was standing first from the right in the last line. She was even more nervous than me when I shook her hand and went back into the auditorium. After the performance, the visit was over and we gathered in the lobby. While walking back to the bus, we noticed that we had started to walk in a line and in pairs. In most of our visits during the last couple of days, our guides were arranging us like that. Now we started doing that subconsciously without even being told. This evening, 
dinner was organized in the city center. Again, ladies from the restaurant staff were glad to see us and sang it to us. One of the French girls in our group had a birthday that day and they managed to produce a real cake for her. She shared it with all of us and we all had a great time. This was also a kind of goodbye party as the majority of people from the group were leaving tomorrow morning. Before departing from the restaurant, Miss Lee unexpectedly announced that we will go and see Scientist Street, brand new street she mentioned on the first day of our visit. We then proceeded to wait in the bus in the parking lot in front of the restaurant for about 10 minutes. One of the guys from our group commented that we are probably waiting for them to empty the street for us. When we finally arrived, we stopped by the street and walked about half a kilometer. New skyscrapers were towering around us. They were very nice, but were mostly in the dark as not many lights have been turned on. There was also a building which looked like a hospital, at least it had a big red cross on it, but it was also mostly in darkness. There were some local pedestrians walking by the street, but they ignored us. We spent the last night in North Korea in the revolving restaurant at the top of the hotel talking about what we have experienced in these past couple of days. As so much stuff has happened in a short interval, it was difficult to notice every interesting detail by myself. That is why it was good to travel in a group as other people could tell me what they have noticed and might have slipped from my sight.